graphs. In other words, I study the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of uh, sparse random matrices from the random matrix point of view. The random matrices, they were introduced by the physicist Wigner in 1950, I think when he was at uh, Princeton, to model the nuclei of uh, heavy atoms. And the, the random matrix model he used is uh, the Gaussian or Sokol ensemble. So it's an uh, n by n matrix, and it's real symmetric. Each entry is just a uh, uh, Gaussian random variable, which are independent, have a mean zero. And for the diagonal entries, the variance is 2 over n. And for the off-diagonal entries, the variance is uh, 1 over n. At first thing, you may feel this uh, variance structure is uh, kind of strange, right? Yeah, it turns out if you choose the variance structure in this way, then the law of the whole matrix is uh, orthogonal invariant, which means if you conjugate the matrix by an orthogonal matrix, then the law does not change. That's why it's called the Gaussian or Sokolow ensemble. Because this is a symmetric matrix, so all the eigenvalues are real. So if you plot the histogram of its eigenvalues, you get this famous semicircle distribution. So all the eigenvalues, roughly, they are supported uh, on the interval from minus 2 to 2. As the density of, uh, density of the eigenvalues, they form this semicircle. Uh, weakness inside uh, is like this. So the nucleus of a heavy atom is a complicated quantum system. So if you only care about the statistical property of it, then you should be able to model its Hamiltonian by this giant random matrix. So in this way, the energy levels of uh, the energy levels of the uh, nucleus of the heavy atom it should uh, behave, uh, there are the eigenvalues of its Hamiltonian. If you believe the Hamiltonian can be modeled by this matrix, then the statistical properties of the energy levels, they should uh, behave very sim similar to this uh, eigenvalues of this random matrix. As the quantity Wigner is interested in, it's uh, the uh, energy gaps, energy spacings, the gaps between two adjacent energy levels of uh, nucleus of a uh, heavy atom. So more precisely, if we take out like uh, two eigenvalues in the bulk of the spectra, which I mean they are far away from those two endpoints from minus two to two. So if we take out lambda i and lambda i plus one and compute this gap, and because it's an n by n matrix, there are n eigenvalues in this interval from minus two to two. So the typical distance between two adjacent eigenvalues is roughly one over n. So we should rescale this quantity by n. Now this is an order one quantity. It turns out this quantity, as the size of the graph goes to infinite, it converges to a random variable. I think now it's called the Gordon meta distribution. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I work on this. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it matches with the experimental data surprisingly well. So this is the uh, Gordon meta distribution from the Gaussian or Sokol ensemble. And this curve, it's the energy spacings for the erbium. As you can see, those two curves, it matches pretty well. And uh, even the tails, it matches. And later, the random ma matrix theory was successfully uh, used uh, to describe the energy spacings for other quantum systems. So here, this uh, matrix ensemble, it's, uh, it uh, has the uh, Gaussian entries. You may wonder that uh, what will happen if we replace those entries by some other distributions, like by the Bernoulli distribution, which takes value plus 1 and minus 1, each with probability half, does this matrix ensemble still match with the experimental data. It turns out Wigner thought about the same question together with another physicist, Dyson, I think he's also at Princeton, with the mathematician Meta. They formulated this Bach universality conjecture. So the Bach eigenvalue statistics, like quantities like this, this should uh, only depend on the symmetry of the matrix ensemble. Either it's a real symmetric, like the one I told you, or it's a complex Hermitian. But this kind of uh, statistics, it should not depend on the details of the model, especially the law of those individual entries. 
Uh, this conjecture, it was uh, proven by about 10 years ago by Ardosh Yao, he is my advisor, and their collaborators, and also roughly the same time by Tao and Wu. So thanks to this uh, theorem, so you can basically take any n by n matrix and put in a the entries, you can choose any distribution you want. Then this quantity as the size of the matrix goes to infinite. It always con converges to the Gordy meta distribution. And some of my works, uh, it's to generalize this universality conjecture to some sparse random matrices. As the models I considered, they are random graph models. And there are two models which are most studied. One is the ardosh graph, another is a random deregular graph. So for our Dorsch-Lenyi graph, we really denote it by GNP, so, uh, which is a random graph with n vertices. And each edge is picked independently with pro probability p. So in this way, the average each vertex has a degree p times n. And uh, the random deregular graph model is just a uniform measure on the set of deregular graphs on n vertices. You just uniformly pick one of them. So if we are given a random graph G, and it can be represented by its adjacency matrix, so A, Aij, it equals one if and only if there's an edge between vertex I and J. We also normalize this matrix such that it has a variance one over N, the same as the Gaussian or Sokolan ensemble, and denotes the normalized adjacency matrix by edge. So because the graph G is a random graph, so this matrix H is a random, ma random matrix. So we can use the tools from the random matrix theory to study this adjacency matrix H. In the special case, if a P is like a one half, then the adjacency matrix is just a random matrix. Each entry is either zero or one with probability one half. So from their theorem, we can conclude the Bach universality is true in this case. But uh, the case uh, I'm interested in is uh, the sparse regime, especially for the r graph, we want the average degree is much smaller than n. Or the, for the Dirichlet graph, we want the degree d is much smaller than n. And if you think about a uh, three regular graph, the adjacency matrix, then each row, there are only three non-zero entries. All other entries are zero. So they look very different from the Gaussian or Sokolan ensemble, which, uh, for which all the entries are almost surely non-zero. And the fundamental question I want to answer is, uh, does the universality is still true? A quantity like this, does it, uh, is it still universal for those sparse and possibly correlated random matrices? So in next five minutes, I will tell you what we do know and what we do not know. So as I, uh, as I just mentioned, for a graph, is f if it gets denser, then it uh, looks uh, more close to the Gaussian or Sokolan ensemble. So the problem should be easier. So the first regime is uh, when the average degree p times n for the ardosh graph, or d for the Dirichlet graph, if uh, the average degree it uh, grows to with the size of the graph, so in this regime, if you plot the eigenvalue distribution for a Dirichlet graph or Dirichlet graph, you still get the semicircle distribution. So here's a simulation for a Dirichlet graph with uh, 2,000 vertices at p is 0.01. As you can see, in this uh, regime, it, roughly each row there's only 20 non-zero entries but the empirical eigenvalue distribution is still cl very close to the semicircle distribution. And in this case, everything is known. The Bach universality is true. So in a joint work with Ben and Yao, we prove you can take epsilon arbitrarily small, as long as the average degree for a Dorsch-Lenyi graph, p times n, it grows with the size of the graph. Then the eigenvalue statistics, like this quantity, it's uh, it's asymptotically the same as the Gaussian or Sokolan ensemble. And uh, in the same regime for random deregular graph, in the joint work with uh, Roland, Anti, and Yao, we showed the Bach universality is true. So as long as uh, the average degree, it grows with the size of the graph, like at the rate n to the epsilon, then this, this quantities like this, it's universal. And uh, the more challenging case is uh, the fixed degree case. For the fixed degree, if for, uh, for the Ardoshnei graph, 
if the average degree is a constant, then the graph is no longer collected. It breaks into many discollected components. As the spectra, it contains many atoms. It's pretty nasty. So we will restrict ourselves to the Dirigular graph case. The Dirigular graphs, they behave much better, at least as long as D is bigger or equal than 3. The graph is almost surely collected. And in this case, the empirical eigenvalue distribution, it no longer converges to the semicircle distribution. It converges to the Kirsten McCann distribution. It's given by d over d minus 1 minus x squared over d times the semicircle distribution. So here's a four rig regular graph with uh, 1,000 vertices. You can see it matches pretty well with the Kirsten McCann distribution. And uh, here are some more plots of the Kenstein McCain distribution. Here's d equals 3, d equals 5, d equals 8, and d equals 200. As you can see, if d gets bigger and bigger, this quantity it converges to 1. And so the Kenstein McCain distribution converges to the semicircle distribution. But for fixed d, the although the empirical distribution is uh, very different from the semicircle distribution from the Gaussian or Sokol ensemble, but uh, it's still believed that the universality is true. So it's uh, formulated uh, as a conjecture by Jacobson, Miner, Riven, and uh, Rudnick that uh, the gap distribution for Bach eigenvalues for large generic Dirigler graph. This quantity is shows asymptotically the same as the Gaussian or Sokol ensemble. Because I, if you think about the uh, adjacency matrix for three regular graph at the Gaussian or Sokol ensemble, they look so different. So to convince myself, I did more simulation to, very, to check if this is true. As you can see, the, the green curve, it's uh, the eigenvalue gaps for random three regular graphs. And the blue curve, is uh, the eigenvalue gaps for GOE. They just match so well, you, can, you cannot see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> As a currency, we are still working towards uh, this problem. And hopefully, after this year, I can have more to see about this problem. Thank you. Thank you very much.